Welcome to the second programme in our series introducing Taroki, the card games played with Taro. If that sounds like a strange idea to you, then please do watch the first film for an overview of Taro's real history and origins. It may not be what you've been led to believe. Before we proceed, I'd like to point out that throughout this project I shall, so far as possible, be using anglicised and standardised terms. Many people find foreign language terms a little harder to learn, and when they change from game to game, from country to country, they can make learning seem positively daunting. Using these standardised terms will not change the game in any way, and should make it easier for you to learn more games in the long run. So, let's take our first proper look at the cards used to play the games. Broadly, tarot cards can be divided into two groups, those for gameplay and those for occultism or fortune telling. There is a little overlap in the use of reproduction packs, but that needn't be of any concern to us. We will not be looking any further at the occult tarots. There are plenty of other websites should you wish to look at them. The cards that are used for gameplay themselves fall into two groups, those with French suits and those with Latin suits. Most countries use French suits these days, but the Latin suits are still used in Italy, Sicily and Switzerland, and of course by those who just prefer them. The standard tarot pack has 78 cards consisting of two parts. The first part consists of four regular suits of hearts, diamonds, clubs and spades in the French designs, or of cups, coins, batons and swords in the Latin designs. Throughout these programmes I shall refer to the swords and batons, along with their counterparts the spades and clubs, as the black suits. Likewise I shall refer to the cups and coins with their counterparts, hearts and diamonds, as the red suits. Each suit consists of ten pip cards and four court cards, being a king, a queen, a cavalier and a valet. The indices used to indicate these cards will vary with the country that they come from, so in France there will be an R for Roy, king, and a D for Dan, the queen. However, you should have no difficulty in recognising them from their designs. The pip cards are usually known by their number, however, the one is usually called the ace, and the two is often called the deuce. Ranking for the regular suits falls under two schemes, called rational and irrational ranking. Rational ranking is the one that you will be most familiar with. All the suits rank with king high, king, queen, cavalier, valet, ten, nine, eight, and so forth, with the ace low. Irrational ranking will sound a little strange, but it is quite common in games on the continent. The black suits rank normally, however, the red suits rank with, again, king high, king, queen, cavalier, valet, ace, deuce, three, four, and so forth with the ten low. Many games are played with a reduced pack, the most common using just 54 cards. Such packs are formed by omitting a number of the pip cards. The number of trumps used is largely constant. We should note that while most trump cards are numbered, outside of France it is common for suit cards to lack corner indices. Some people find this a little difficult, especially when dealing with swords and batons, which new players often confuse. But really, this is a problem that can be resolved with 10 minutes and a marker pen. The set of trumps is numbered from 1 to 21. The French suited packs have a variety of designs, while the Latin packs will have the traditional figures such as the angel or the world. There is also an extra card, variously known as the excuse, scuse, skis, dis, matto, foe and fool, and this is what we shall call him. The fool's role differs between games. In some he is an excuse, while in others he is the highest trump. The trumps rank according to their number with 21 high, however, in Italian games the angel, while numbered number 20, outranks the world, which is still numbered 21. While the traditional trumps have their obvious titles such as death, temperance and the lovers, since the development of French suited packs, some new little names have arisen. The one of trumps has in the past been called the sparrow, though we shall know him by his more common name, the pagat. The two of trumps is sometimes called the owl, the three is the cockatoo, and the four is the marabou, which is a type of African stork. So together, it's little surprise to learn that the four lowest trumps are called the birds. The twenty-one of trumps is known either as the world or the monde, which means the same. 
Among these cards, three are commonly held to be of special importance. We call these the Honours. They are the Pagat, the World and the Fool. In Italy, of course, where the Trump Order is a little different, the Angel replaces the World as an Honour. One last distinction between the cards is that of counters and empty cards. A counter is usually any card worth two or more points, while an empty card is one that is worth either one or no points. In the next programme we will take a brief look at the basics of gameplay. Don't forget to visit the website www.tarakino.com and download your PDF book of rules. Until then, thank you.